We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back to part two of building your Sonic's Tail kit. We're going to pick up the pace and do note that that little number in the lower right hand corner is the page number of the plans that we're currently working on. So let's get back. We're continuing on where we left off from part one. Our next step is to take our skin and identify the top which is the straight edge and then we want to draw a line 19 and 3 quarters inches from the top edge and draw that line all the way down and all the way around onto the other side also. This is going to be the center line for one of our ribs. After drawing the line, we want to mark the rivet locations. Now these are spelled out in our plans. They're basically an inch apart, starting, I believe, a half inch from the top, but the dimensions are in the plans. And then on the other side, we want to do the same thing, where we have the marks identified. and also on the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and drill using my number 40 drill just for pilot holes each of these marks all the way around. The one hole that we don't want to drill is the one that's on the lip here. We'll leave that one alone because later we'll have a hinge that goes there. And here we have the holes drilled in on all the sides all the way around. Our next step is to take the rib T0703 and what we want to do with this rib is to draw a line on the center all the way around. I just used my ruler and a marker and drew a center line. What we want to do then is to insert the rib inside. And we can do this, of course, by simply opening up. It only goes one way to match the shape of the skin. And insert it inside right along the holes. And our goal is to position it so that we can see the line of the ribs through the holes that we drilled. That way we know we have the rib centered. So I will fool around with this until I get it just right and can close it up and see the center line through these holes. One technique I can recommend to help position the rib properly is to start with the short side and use a clamp. Now the reason this is very useful is that it's important that the rib be all the way tight to this edge and not slide down away. So I looked for the line, clamped it, and I'll go ahead and drill at least one of the holes and Clico it so that the rib is in position at least on this edge and all the way tight to this edge. Then I can close it up. And by the way, if you need to move the rib one way or the other, simply use one of your hinge pins and you can stick it through the open end on either side to push the rib into place to get it lined up. And then we can drill some more holes and clico them because our goal then is to drill all the pilot holes into the rib all the way around. And there we have it drilled on all sides Now our next step is to take care of the end. We have the end rib T0702. 
very similar to the middle rib. This one will fit right inside here. We want this rib to be flush with the top, so we'll insert it inside until it's flush with the edges. We need to lay out a rivet line exactly the same as the center. In other words, the spacing is the same on all sides for this end rib. We don't really need a center line. What I'm going to do is mark a line a quarter inch in from the edge. The flange is about a half inch, so if we go a quarter inch in from the edge, we'll hit the center all the way around. So I'm going to lay out the same spacing as we did before, one quarter inch in from the edge, and then drill the pilot holes. When you have done your drilling all the way around, all three edges, then you can insert, clamp it flush, and then drill into the rib. Now at the bottom of the skin we have the area that we cut off with the notches. We're going to mark a line for our rivets and space them out as per the directions on all three sides. Let's take a look at how the rib fits. This is the horn we created previously. This will simply slip inside. And we want the bottom flush with the bottom of the skin. So we're just test fitting the horn at this time, but these will be our rivet locations. Look at the other side. The back. Note that they provided three holes in this flange. That's somewhat unfortunate, but not the end of the world, because that means when we mark down here, we need to mark to try and match these holes as close as possible. It would have been better if there were no holes, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. So I simply made marks where the holes would be so that when I pre-drill the holes, they'll come very close. Remember, we're enlarging these holes before we rivet so they'll be larger. So the first step is to go ahead and drill at all of my locations as per the plans on all three sides. Then we'll set this in place and drill into the flange. Now that we have all of the holes drilled on all three sides of the skin, I've reinserted the horn. I got the bottom nice and flush with the edge of the skin and have used a clamp to hold it steady while I now use my small holes as guide holes and I will go ahead and drill with my number 40 drill bit into the flange and Clico as I go all the way around. And here we have the horn drilled and clecoed in place. We need to prepare the hinge for our rudder, T1307. 
and by preparation we need to drill a hole centered below each of the loops and this will be a pilot hole with our number 40 drill bit. Now the easiest way to space this out real accurately, the holes that is, is to first draw a center line for the entire length and of course we need to cut the hinge lengthwise to the length specified in our plans. Then draw the center line. Then in order to drill a hole precisely at the correct location throughout its length, I borrowed T0304 spar, which hasn't been used yet, and all of the holes happen to be spaced just right such that we can take the hinge and place it inside the flange and look for the line through the holes, the center line, and by lining up the hole with the center of the barrel, it turns out that we get a hole at precisely the location all along the hinge. So I'm going to simply clamp the hinge to the flange, line up the holes in the flange with the center of the barrel, make sure I can see the line through all the holes and then I can use the hole as a guide to drill into the hinge. And here we have the hinged all drilled out with our number 40 drill. I'm going to deburr the back here so that I can sit flat while we're setting it up on the rudder. We have our rudder sitting flat on the table. I removed the Clico so it would sit flat. And right in front of it is the hinge that we have prepared. I placed a hinge pin through the loops to make it a little more stiffer. We're looking at the top edge of the rudder and notice I have placed a mark at the half inch location below the top. This is where the hinge is to begin or start. The other direction as far as where it goes, how far up, is that if we look at our plans the loop is supposed to be off of the plane of the table, off the surface. So we want to raise it up a little bit from touching the surface by just a little bit. So I'm going to set this in location and our goal then is to drill using the holes in the hinge into the surface here and Clico. We want to maintain this precise location of having the hoops off the table by the amount specified in our plans which is just a little bit about one and a half millimeters. And we want to do that for the entire duration of the hinge along its path. If it helps you can place an item underneath the hinge to help maintain its distance above the table while drilling. We need to drill all of the holes out to their final rivet size of 1 8 or number 30 drill. 
and then disassemble everything because we need to deburr all of our holes and edges and then reassemble for final riveting. Here's what it should look like with all of your holes drilled out to size 30. We're now going to disassemble and deburr and then reassemble and rivet. We're all deburred and Clico together, so we're ready for our final riveting. The rivets are essentially all the same specified in your plans. And we have the rudder all riveted. Here is our T1207 spar fitting. I have marked the lines for the bend as per our plans and we need to bend this at a 35 degree angle right at this location. Let's go to the bending press to accomplish this. I drew a double line to help make sure when I put the socket in place I could see that it was centered from left to right. Now in preparation we created a V-block. I simply took a scrap piece of 2x4 and approximately an inch and a half across the top and made a 90 in it. Place this up here. Here we have a simple ram. Any type of press will work. And we're going to lay our piece so that the center is centered on the V-groove. And for our pressure point, I'm using approximately a one inch socket to get our half inch radius as called for in the plans. I'm going to center that and bring the ram down. Now, I do have my protractor so I know that I'm looking for that angle so it's approximately that angle we want. We'll take it in stages and we have a we're getting awful close. very close now there will be some spring back so actually at this point we're actually on it pretty much at the moment so we'll take the pressure off and take a look and, 
and using our protractor, we tweaked it till we got it just where we wanted to. Now we're going to assemble our spar fitting that we have previously bent to the proper angle with our forward spar channel, T1208. At one end we have a series of pre-drilled holes and the other end has a bent angle at the top. Our goal is to mark a line using our plans distance from the bottom. I believe it's five and seven eighths inches up. Check your plans for that. And what we're going to do is take our spar fitting and place it on the back like this all the way up to that line. And we're going to clamp it in place because we're going to end up drilling through these small pilot holes into the fingers of our spar fitting once we have it clamped exactly in place. I'll go ahead and do my clamping. So we want this to be nice and even with the edge of the spar and up to our line. When we're happy we have that position properly, we'll simply turn it over and drill and clico through the small holes and then we can proceed to add some additional components. So at this time I'm going to use my number 40 drill or the 530 seconds drill and drill all the way through into our spar fitting. You want to make sure you're drilling nice and straight. If there's any doubt, you can also use a drill press. And here I have it all drilled out. And next we have a clip. This is the T1209 clip. And it is full of its pre-drilled holes. And this one is going to go at the bottom set of holes down here, right like this, and then on the back side is the T1210 clip, and this also is pre-drilled with holes, and it will go on the back side. So let me click on these two clips in place. They will share the same set of three holes at the bottom here. And this is what it looks like installed, clicoed in place. The T1209, and on the back, the T1210. And they share the same set of three holes at the bottom. Our next step is to drill all of these holes out to final size for our rivets, and that'll be the number 30 drill bit. And then we can clico all these pieces together again. And after drilling, we need to disassemble and deburr all of the holes carefully, and then we'll reassemble and then rivet. Now I have all the holes drilled out to the size 30 ready for riveting. The only hole I didn't drill was this center one here. That's because on the other side it's not really being used at the present moment so I'll leave that one to its original size. I'm going to take everything apart and deburr and reassemble and rivet.
Now our plans call for us to rivet from this side so the head of the rivet will go on this side. And we're not going to rivet the top two holes. We're going to leave those alone. And all of these will be CCP 44s. And the last row down here will be 46s. And that's because we have an additional thickness to deal with because of the two clips. On page T09, we're going to assemble the main spar. Now this is made up of two components which will end up butting up against each other to make it nice and long. The lower half, the smaller piece, is T1204, and that's a short piece with a hole, and it is all pre-drilled on the sides and on the web, and that will go at the bottom and then the longer spar, much longer, and this has a bend at the top, and this is T1203, also all pre-drilled, and this will go on the top or comprise the top of our spar. Now inside and on the outside of the spar will go two straps. Our aft strap is T1201. Now this is made up of heavy aluminum. I prepared it by shining up all of the edges, deburring them, removing all the teeth marks throughout, and then also drilling the holes to their pilot size, 330 seconds, or drill number 40 size. And then we have a front spar strap which is another heavy piece of aluminum and I cleaned up all the edges with my Scotch-Brite wheel and drilled out all of the holes to their pilot size of 330 seconds so these are ready to go so we have a lower spar and an upper spar an aft strap and a forward strap and then we have a couple of three small pieces which we'll, we will use in a moment when we assemble the spar. Set these down for now. Our first step then is to simply align our spar on the table with Clecos. And we'll start by laying the lower spar and the upper spar and butt them together. And then insert the aft strap. Now there's a longer channel and that goes at the bottom and all of the pre-drilled holes will match up nicely with the pre-drilled holes in the spars themselves. And this will go right here, like that. And I'll go ahead and clico this so you can see exactly how it fits together. But what's nice is I don't have to do any drilling as the clicos will find the holes in the strap and in the spar underneath. I have joined the upper and lower spar. Here's the joint right here. And they're joined by simply putting the strap in place and all the holes line up. And I simply clicked them together. Now I'm going to turn this over, lay it on top of the clicos, and what we want to do now is put the forward strap in place where it belongs and clico that in place. And here I have the forward strap clicoed in place. Notice that it begins at this location here. Just past the joint a bit. And the holes will only line up one way so you really can't put it on wrong just follow your plans and then the top ends up here. Now the next step is down here at the bottom of the strap there are four holes left and that's just past the joint here between the two spars and we're going to add a spacer 
which is just a piece of aluminum. This, in fact, is temporary, and that will sit here, and the holes will line up. Then we're going to take our angle. This is T1205, and that will sit on top of the spacer, and I will click on this in place. And I should mention that the T1205 does not come pre-drilled with the four holes. My spacer did, so I simply clamped the spacer to the back of the angle, made sure it all fit properly, that I had it in the right position, and then used the four holes in the spacer to drill through into the angle. And there I clicked it in place. So we have the spar, the spar strap underneath, then the spacer, and then our angle. And all the holes match up. Now we're going to move up just a little bit, a number of holes, and add T1206, which is a clip, a bent piece of aluminum, and that will sit right here, and I will click all that into place. And here is our clip clicked in place. At this time, we have completed adding components to our main spar. It's time now to drill out all of the holes to their final size. They will either be for rivets, in which case we'll drill out to the 1 8 or size 30 drill bit, and some of these holes will be 3 16 inch bolts. So we'll drill those out to the larger size to accommodate the bolts. After drilling to the final size, we will then deburr, reassemble with plenty of clecos, and then do our final riveting and bolting. I have deburred and reassembled everything back together. Let's take a look at the holes and their sizes. Now down at the bottom, these six holes, as per our plans, will not be riveted at this time. And then starting at the next set of holes, for the next one, two, three, four, five, six sets of holes, these will all be uh, 3 sixteenths bolts as called out in the plan. So these holes were the 3 sixteenths holes, these six. Then notice that there's one more set of 3 sixteenths here. These clecos with the gold color are for 3 16 inch holes. Then the rest of them all the way up are standard 1 8 inch holes. These three here, we are not going to rivet as per the plan specify. So I'm going to go ahead and start riveting and inserting bolts as per the plans. And this is all spelled out on the plans. But I will double check that everything is assembled properly and then go ahead and start riveting. The plans also show the direction of the rivet heads and the bolt heads and the nuts so that they go in the proper way. Here is our completed main spar. Notice the first three sets of holes at the bottom we left open as per the plans. And then we had our series of bolts. And the heads of the bolts are on this side. And then a series of rivets. And of course, our clip with the rivets in between. Notice the heads of the bolts are different from here 
to here. I needed three washers instead of two under my bolts here. And then at the top here, these three remained open as per the plans. And that completes this assembly. We need to make the T1006 hinge and that's very easy to do. We're simply going to take the pin and slide it all the way out. That will separate the two hinge halves. And then we simply want to measure down 28 and a half inches. Put a mark and then use our snips to cut this. And then just make sure that it matches your plans as far as the length and where the barrel ends so that we don't cut it halfway in the middle of a barrel. Now we're going to set our main spar on the table like this and then take our hinge that we prepared and the hinge is going to go on the left side on the inside of the flange and we'll go up against here. Now I have made a mark one inch from the top and I'm going to clamp the hinge at that mark and we'll take a closer look at it. Note that the hinge is on the inside and I have lined it up with the mark which is one inch from the very top that's where it starts here's a shot from the end to get an idea that the center of the barrel is to be even with the edge so I will clamp this in place and then drill through all of the holes I need to add a few more clamps and Clico as I drill so that the hinge material will get its holes from the holes in the flange. I also like to leave the pin in the hinge because it makes the hinge a little stiffer so it doesn't flex as you go down the line and also makes it a little easier to see where the center line of the barrel is in relation to the edge of the flange. And we will not open up the holes until we put the skin on. So we're done. We can simply unclico it and put it aside for later. So if you have made it this far, then it's certainly a good time to get back to building.